Thanks, Lee. Um, thank you very much to Genai and to the Health Innovation Hub um, for convening this meeting. And uh, it's a privilege, gentlemen, to uh, take part in a panel with you. Um, and I look forward to hearing the rest of your input. Um, these are my disclosures of interest. Uh, when the National Health Committee was reconvened in its current format um, at the end of 2011, we were given a statutory remit to manage um, from an evidence-based technology across New Zealand and across Vote Health. We term technology under the WHO definition, so it is systems, models of care, procedures, interventions, devices, pharmaceuticals, um, and all types of things. <laughs> <laughs> what was our remit? What is the remit that we've been given? Basically, it is to obtain the best quality health, wellness and independence um, outcomes for the citizens of this country in a way that demonstrates measurable value for money so that we make wise investments with all of the resources we have available to us in the health system that we do that in a way that can be sustained in the medium to long term. We are in the strategic medium to long run business, not in the short term business. And we were given an additional remit, and that is to enhance health's contribution to GDP. I think we should take a bow. As I travel around the world, I think there are few health systems around the world that are as good as ours. And ours is only good because of the contribution that every citizen and every person in this country makes, and also the contribution that the teams that lead our health service make. This is the Legatum 2013 Prosperity Index, and this is the economic part of it, and you can see how we fare. This index takes into account over 95% of the world's population and 95% of the world's GDP. For the last five years, New Zealand has ranked fifth on the international scale in how its citizens determine whether or not we are a prosperous nation. This is the latest mirror, mirror on the wall released from the Commonwealth Fund. It also says, for the investment that we make in health, where are we? Here, per capita. These are the outcomes we get on the international stage. Well done, New Zealand. Seriously well done. So what are the challenges and therefore the opportunities that we face? And how does health information technology help us meet those challenges going forward? How do we achieve the outcomes we want collectively as a nation by working together? Here are the challenges. The things I'd like you to note on this PowerPoint are how much of GDP it is predicted we will continue to spend on health if we return to the historic rate of growth, and I'll come back to that. I'd like you also to see the difference between expenditure and revenue, and I'd like you to see how that plays into national debt, and I'd like you to keep that in mind, please. Like every country in the world, our population is growing and it's ageing. That brings some challenges. How do we manage the increasing demand and how do we manage the long-term conditions um, that we need to manage effectively in the future? And how do we do that when we are changing the taxation structure? When the demographics will change the balance um, between those people who are paying tax and those people who are the recipients, particularly of health care, that comes from our tax dollar. The big spenders 
are New Zealand super and health. And this graph tells us what will happen, this is the predicted trajectory if we return to previous spending, this is what's currently happening, and this is what we need to do in health to enhance GDP so we can truly deliver the systems we want to deliver to every citizen, and that includes you and me. We have currently $15 billion of vote health in this country, and we have health insurance in the private sector and out-of-pocket spending. There is a tight and good partnership in this country about how we spend our health dollars. We need to protect and enhance that, and we need to make sure we use this money effectively. There are drivers of expenditure, but some of those drivers, and technology is a key one, are also enablers. We need to harness the enabling, and you've heard about the importance of doing that at practical, sensible, <coughs> local and regional levels from both Lance and David. So, where does the NHC fit in this? We are responsible for providing evidence-based recommendations to the Minister of Health and Cabinet about how to prioritise the spend to achieve the remits I showed you on the first slide. We do that across four domains, and it's important to remember that, and it's important to know that we are required to implement. The recommendations we give must have an impact, and they must land in the sector if we're to be successful. We operate on models of care. You heard Lee talk about the fact that she wants to understand, as a governor in a district health board, what the roadmap looks like and how we work together to move the resources around. So, it is excellent to develop pathways of care, but all the clinicians in this room and the managers know that a pathway of care won't land unless it is underpinned by a sound business model that is sustainable. Here is an example of a model of care. The things I want you to note are that it is focused on outcomes and that the outcomes cross a lot of domains. That there is the word implementation and there, is a, there are a set of feedback loops. Plans are one thing, Strategy and carry through is another, and processes have to be tweaked continually if they're to deliver satisfactory outcomes. So let's go to personal responsibility, something we're all responsible for. Personal responsibility in health is about the autonomy of patients and citizens to choose what they believe is right for them. Economists tell us that that is consumer sovereignty. But to have good consumer sovereignty requires clear data, information and knowledge. The right people at the right time and it needs to be trustworthy and reliable. Without that, we will get market failure. That's the importance of technology health technology information systems. In health, as managers and clinicians, we are all professionals, and as such, we have a duty of care to the citizens and the populations that we serve. We have a duty of care to deliver good care that results in good outcomes within the resources that are available to us. We are all trained in various systems, and I'm using medicine here, but there are plenty of other systems in other professional groups, including management, to remind us of the importance of that professional responsibility and duty. We are also trained to live within the resources we have available to us and make the very best use of them, whether they be human, capital, infrastructure, um, disposables, whatever, or money. 
information gets exchanged and put in front of citizens and patients in various ways, but the most important way is the trusted professional relationship between professional management and professional clinicians and the patients that they care for. That relationship means that the information can be transferred technologically in lots of different ways, and that's changing markedly. But it doesn't take out the human factor that needs to be there to interpret and manage the information in the patient um, clinician contract. This is, these two slides are from the New Zealand Future Data Forum. It's a new forum chaired by Mr John Whitehead, the immediate past secretary of the New Zealand <coughs> Treasury, who's just stepped down as a governor of the World Bank. Health is not alone in trying to understand how data works and how it connects us. In fact, health needs to be properly connected to the rest of the system and across whole of government if we are to deliver on our complex mandate. <coughs> Here is one example of how connecting data at a high level matters. This is a young man, a fictitious story, who from the age of three had lots of social input. Um, education, uh, youth corrections, youth justice, social services, work and income, but by the age of 20, he was incarcerated in prison serving a 12 year term. The system failed him. The system failed his family. The system failed the taxpayer. If we could connect that data, which is what the Data Futures Forum is trying to do, then we might have been able to deliver better outcomes for that young man, his family and his community. Connectivity matters. Knowledge, data, information, as Sean Hendy and the late Sir Paul Callaghan have told us really clearly, coupled with innovation, and we have plenty of this in the number eight wire fencing company, uh, country that we are, um, coupled with connectivity is the way to turn our economy from one that is based largely on primary producing industries, a very good foundation, I might add, into one that is enhanced by high-tech manufacturing. <coughs> we need to embrace the providers, the innovators, the inventors and the manufacturers of health technology and information technology and we need to work together to deliver the best outcomes. So what does the forward strategy look like? In order to deliver on the remit that the country has, we need to have informed, engaged citizens. Citizens who can practice their consumer sovereignty. We need engaged and professional healthcare managers and clinicians. We need the right data and information in the right place at the right time and we need to trust in that data and information. And we need time. Clinicians are time poor and everything else rich. And it takes time to explain and do these things. I see Lance smiling. I hope he's smiling for the right reasons. <laughs> so, everyone in this room who's involved in technology development, you are the enablers. We need this technology to land in the sector. We need it to be fit for purpose. We need it to provide measurable value for money for the whole system and for New Zealand. We need you to work together. Everything needs to be connected. We need the tools and the strategies to be sustainable and we need, hopefully, for them to have good export potential. We, the sector, will support you, but we need your help as much as you need ours. Thank you.